Mola Chuck. Hey, what's up? This is Rogelio Lozano from Downset, and you are watching Mola Chuck, the only TV you need. Make sure you watch it. Mola Chuck! Can you tell us about um, the concert in Denver where you nearly get your head chop off? Oh, yes. We were playing um, the Tattoo the Earth uh, tour. And on that tour, it was a year 2001. And, uh, and on that tour was Slipknot, Sepultura, uh, Slayer, Seven Dust, Hatebreed, uh, Head PE, Downset, uh, Amen. It was a crazy tour. And uh, in Denver, we played Red Rocks. It's a really nice amphitheater. It's uh, where you two film one of their videos i think it was uh sunday bloody sunday they, re they recorded uh, the video there it's really beautiful check it out so it's a really steep amphitheater and it gets it gets pretty high you can fit maybe uh five to seven thousand maybe eight i don't know maybe twelve thousand people a lot a lot of people and it goes really high we were playing our set and uh, all of a sudden my cable all of a sudden my guitar goes out and i'm looking what happened and my guitar tech is holding the cable because it got cut in half by a, a CD that somebody threw. It was someone threw it from the very, from the very top, and threw the CD, and came down like a razor blade, oh my gosh. and chopped off my cord. And yeah, I was in front of Slayer and everybody, and everybody was like, "Wow, the, the chances of that have the it's like." Ah, oh, it's a really slim. Never know, heard but, that yeah. before. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's... That could have been something else too, you know. But it just hit my cord, and shut it, shut off my guitar completely, just shut it off. And that was well. That's what ha that's what happened. And everybody was shocked. And pretty much that's that's what happened. Mola Chuck. Anger. Um, how does it feel to have such an anthem? You know, um, it's uh, it feels great. You know, it's that's still your, your childhood dream, you know, and um, I, it helped. I helped my career and uh, helped me meet a lot more bands and get tours, get record deals, and you know. So when it first happened, when it first was playing on the radio on the video jukebox, it, back then there was a jukebox. And you had to pay, call, and then say I want to, and then you give them a dollar, and then they play your video, and that's how they had. It was uh, MTV, but it was uh, it was on a it, it was on a on a spare channel, right? Okay. So they would play it a lot. They played it a lot. Everybody in, our, in LA played it a lot, and we were we were really excited about it. Every, everybody, all the original guys that helped, you know, all the original members, they, they had a really good time performing it, and we have a good time performing it still after so many years, you know? So, yeah, yeah, that feels good. <laughs> Let's go to here. If, yeah. if, if you get annoyed with your songs, I think, uh, then... Yeah. You lost your passion. Well, well, what happened was um, there was a different version of that song, and um, there's a, if you dig really deep, and it's in the YouTube, it's on YouTube, and it's it had different lyrics, and they were um, uh, they were directed at somebody, at uh, Zach De La Rocha, and uh, you know uh, what it's called, Ray Disc Zach version. Okay. Wow. And so then um, we changed it because we just. Um, I actually, I myself made them change the lyrics because I didn't want to have the, any kind of friction with anybody. I didn't want to make enemies right away and getting in this business, you know, and right off the bat you have enemies. So we changed it and we're, it was still successful for us and, and, it, and it turned out, it was, it's, I, if you should listen to the song, um, you know, it's, I bring it up because uh, Nuclear Blast also put out a, a double seven inch of the first demos. Okay. So we have some here with us. Um, I'll give you one. I'll give you one. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a, it's a, uh, yeah, it's a, it, it's it's two seven inches, it, and it's a bundle, and um, it's it's uh, there's uh, there's uh, six songs, and it has the original version. Wow. So it's. Um, at first, I was reluctant to having it be released. I was like, "Oh, is it going to re bring back bad memories and and make enemies again?" But it's you know, it's part of our history. It's part of our past. So we we want to we're releasing it on on vinyl right now. And so it's, it's yeah. there's only maybe a 
a thousand available, but uh, they're out there. If you look for it, you can find it. Wow. It's, a, it's the new bundle on Nuclear Blast. So okay. that's the original version. So that's it's, cool. it's a little different and a little more aggressive. And, uh, yeah, I have to yeah. check it out, yeah. the original yeah. version. Yeah, it's more definitely more aggressive. Yeah, more street. But I mean, not saying that the other version isn't street, but because uh, he made, uh, he talked about a couple other political issues, which was, you know, I, I, I thanked him for that, and, and we got we got over that, and we were still able to play the song, and you know, uh, you know the, the the following that comes to see us, and, and when we play it, they appreciate it, and we appreciate that they appreciate it. Mola Chuck. If if you listen to your album uh, Maintenance, um, some could say uh, you reached a point in your music life where you always write effortless and timeless uh, anthems. Do you feel the same way for the Maintain album? Um, you know, um, I we had a, a, a difficult time with re, with the pre-production and and the recording because it all happened during the pandemic. And yeah. so when we were in pre-production, we had a lot of fear. And so um, I'm really happy with the outcome of the album. I'm happy with the sound. I'm happy with the songs and how the consistency and and what I wanted to do was bring back. Bring back the old and the new, mix it together. Bring like maybe have have it kind of sound like the versions of the first two albums, and then how I feel like I'm writing today, you know. And so I wanted to mix it in. So I, I felt we accomplished what we wanted to. Um, I think um, you know some of the songs didn't get a chance because we didn't get a chance to uh, make videos for them because Ray had left the band a year ago. So we were had plans to make maybe four more videos, but you know that this is what happens in, in this business. It's you know you, you have uh, hardships sometimes, and you just got to overcome it and and move and move on and move keep on and yeah get, yeah and getting stronger. So from your experience, definitely. So we're gonna you know have a you know me and, and a, a, new, a new you know Neil Romer. He was from he's from Cutthroat. He used to be in Downset for a little while when Ray stepped out. He had a couple times where he stepped out. Excuse me. So he's he's been out of the band a couple times along with myself. In the past, I've been out of the band a couple times as well. But um, you know, Ray and I formed the band, and if he wants to abandon the band, I have the right to keep moving it forward, and that's what I want to do because I want to play the songs like Anger and and even the songs that I didn't write on the second album because I wasn't on the second album. I was on the third album and the Maintain album. But Ray and I formed the band. We started. We did the demos. We did the first album, and then. I didn't. I wasn't in the band for the second album, but I love the second album. I love what they did. I think it's the best album, even though I wasn't on in the band. I like the songs because the way they um, they structured, uh, you know, from I don't know if it's 14, 15 songs on on the album, and it's they just did a really good job of arranging the music and then and then the way they formatted from one to 13, and and it was a really nice story that they told. So I, I'm, I, li I like playing those songs, and then I want to play songs from Check Your People and, and the Maintain album. So we're, we're mostly focusing on doing songs from the first, the first three albums and the last album. Mola Chuck. There are quite a few uh, recording studios in L.A., and is uh, Downtown L.A. Rehearsal Studio one of them? Okay, so Downtown L.A. Rehearsal can be a, re a, re a recording studio if you want it to be. He, um, Chris Poland from Mega X Mega Death Guitar Player, he owns the building, and so he ha all he rents out two stories of a four-story building, and um, we we just go in there for pre-production for writing, and so from there we went to our our producer was with us too, Nick Jet. He plays drums for Terror, and uh, he produced the band and. Um, Uh, we did two months there during the pandemic of, of every day recording every day. Uh, it was Monday through Saturday, one day off every day for two months, and and we knocked out the album during the pandemic it, with masks and spraying everybody and oh, wow. the whole thing. And it, yeah, it was it was. Uh, I never been in fear of, of writing of that kind of fear of not knowing if you're going to get sick. You know, you don't know. We didn't know what it was. Nobody knew what it was. So it was still in its early stages, but we had to get to work because we 
you know, nuclear blast signed us, and we're, we said we're going to go on this date, and that's what. So after two months of, of pre-production, we went to uh, the studio that Nick Jet works at. It's in Granada Hills. Uh, it's north Los Angeles, okay. about 45 minutes north of LA, and it's a home studio called Jet to Mars, and um, is they have all the tools that you need there, and we're really satisfied with the recordings and. Nick Jett did a really good job engineering and producing. Uh, he's a really good producer. And so, um, yeah, we, and then Howie Weinberg mastered it at his studio. He has a home studio in Hollywood. So we uh, did all the, all the steps necessary to make sure this album sounded sonically, you know, as contemporary, as, uh, as, as competitive with the sounds that are coming out today like recordings like the machine head album is unbelievable it sounds incredible and so you know we have to um, compete with stuff with albums like that you know and i thought that in our own way we we achieved what we were looking for and hopefully the next album you know we uh, set a different goal and achieve that one as well you talked a little bit about la um Would you say uh, LA has changed since the 90s? Oh, absolutely. 100%. Well, I don't want to say 100%, but from what we grew up in, uh, in our times in the 80s, the 90s, there was a lot of gang warfare where we grew up in the east, east, the, all the east sides of Los Angeles, northeast, uh, east Los Angeles, south central, the west side. But the west side would be more like uh, south. South, like uh, like you know, Venice, Santa Monica. There was a lot of gangs there too. And, uh, it was really difficult I would, uh, for us to um, operate in in certain areas. Um, uh, we had a, you know, a, you know, the gang warfare was 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 difficult to to navigate through because they were everywhere. There was thousands of them. They were in a, I don't know what kind of war they were doing, but they were in a war. And they were everywhere, thousands. And um, that that changed through the years. And then, and and now there's a gang, what's called gang truths. And you get you get certain guys that have, that have been a part of the, the gangs or the part of the cliques that have been there for a long time and have a lot of seniority. And they they all came together and called the truths. Okay. I know so all, all, all the Latino gangs and the black gangs, and and so. Um, It's changed in that way, and then ever since Rodney King, the LAPDs changed. They're they're much more laid back now, but now the sheriff's department are took place of them. They're, they're the guys who are they're the mean guys, the, the sheriffs. Okay, wow, but, yeah. So the LAPD is more laid back, but now there's a new police force. I think you know you know they they do their job really aggressively. Um, I, I don't approve of some of the things they do, but I do like that they take care of business and when there's bad things going on, when there's robberies and when there's someone that, something that they have to do, you know, they, I've seen them take care of business, so I can appreciate that side of the, of the sheriffs. And, um, and now that there's a lot of surveillance, a lot of less crime, but there's still, um, you know, carjacking's really high right now. People are getting carjacked a lot. And, um, a lot of uh, kidnapping yeah and you know selling 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 people off and you know so uh, yeah there's a lot of that and but uh, it's a lot better and, and I think uh, the youth is uh, they're more channeled these days and they and they have a, they have a better outlet with the internet and, and um, so uh, I think um, overall I'm really appreciative of how things have turned out We do have a, home, a high homeless problem and a high drug problem. Um, you know, and it's up, it's up to the government and the city officials to figure it out. And I'm sure they can. I don't know why they don't. But that's a problem we have right now with this, uh, the homeless. They're really they're ca causing like an ecocide because they're really contaminating a lot of areas. And some areas of downtown LA are, you know, very contaminated with typhus and different types of diseases. You know, so... You know, you have that, but overall, I think uh, the youth, I'm, I'm more proud of the youth these days, and uh, there's a lot more music. Um, 
there still was I, I think you know it's different the music is different the music scene um, it's just different but it's still there's an existence there's a there's a big existence um, it's just a different uh, attitude and it's different um, uh, uh, just a different spirit about it so um, but overall I, I'm, I'm really happy that there's just less gang warfare you know it, it's that was really bad because it was a very tragic you know a lot of a lot of un, unnecessary deaths and uh, you know a lot of untimely young deaths and uh, there was a lot of talent that gets gotten thrown away in those years in a span of 30 years of of uh, gang aggression so you know so um, uh, other than you know than that um, I, I'd like to see some changes um, and those areas where I mentioned about you know the drugs the drug problem and you know you know the, the drugs that are coming in from other countries you know I, I think there's got to be a way to stop that and, you know, because it's contaminating our youth and you know there's still some contamination going on and um, so yeah there's still some work to do yeah yeah I get that but to hear yeah. to hear about like, like gang violence I mean cannot even imagine that because I'm just used to watching movies or series about it but to hear from you that's yeah you have you have to build you would you build a defensive guard and you and it's almost like you're in a warfare you have to always look around look at the cars that are coming and look at your right side look at your left side look in your mirror just watching out for just people and if you see a, a group of guys you've got to go the other way and find another route and hopefully you don't get caught in a dead end street oh wow you know so stuff like that you know uh, we used to have to worry about what kind of hats we wore certain certain hats we couldn't wear in certain neighborhoods and it's just three miles away so yeah that's yeah uh, that's, that's pretty yeah. rough wow. it's like like uh like the black gangs they had uh they had the bloods and the crips right so red and blue that's how they differentiate themselves so red bandana or blue bandana so so that's how they differentiate so if you wear red and the other guys wore blue you're a target wow. and they're in on a game they all they they know what they signed up for You know they're in, they're in it, and that's what they wanted to do. They want to have gunplay, so that's what it's all about. That's what it was all about. That and a lot of uh, resentment from past killings and a lot of anger, and it just built through the years. And um, but it was now it's uh, it's, it's over. The wars are yeah. the wars are over. Truth is better than war. And that that's where a lot of uh, what Ray used to write about it was, a, and he got inspired to write a lot of the. The first album lyrics, because of the, the gang warfare that were happening, all, all you know, the being you know downset at the bottom of the economic ladder. He says, you know, we're, it's the downset means underprivileged, you know, or it has another meaning as we're down with each other. We're a down, we're a downset, a set of people, a group of people. So we have, it's a by meaning name downset, and, um, but I like. I myself, I, I like to, you know, my interpretation of Downset is, you know, we're, we're underprivileged. We were underprivileged at the time. Um, you know, being Latino, it was difficult at the time. Not many Latino bands were getting record deals. And, um, so that was a battle that Ray and I had, you know, with our other bands, Social Justice and um, my other band, No Reason. So it was... Uh, We had different types of battles, and there was a lot of racial aggression. And, um, so it's it's changed. Definitely, that all that um, racism is changing. It's getting better, I think. But there's still there's still a lot of animosity between certain races. Definitely. And um, it's it's tough to see. Um, it's tough to be in the middle of it. And so uh, uh, just uh, you know. Forming downset was one of my escapes. Mola Chuck. You had the chance uh, when you were younger uh, to meet the king of surf rock, um, Dick. Uh, oh yes. Dick Dale, yes. yes. <laughs> How was it for you? Well, it was a uh, it was it was a surprise because um, at the time uh, we we were in Chicago and we had we we booked the same hotel and so in the morning you have the, the breakfast the continental breakfast. Mm -hmm. 
And a continental breakfast is not a big spread. Continental breakfast is a small spread with bread, cheese, and, and a couple a few things, coffee and some donuts, some cookies maybe. Not a big elaborate spread like we had last night's hotel. It was amazing, uh, unbelievable. Two big tables of food. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't like that. <laughs> but uh, so our crew was downstairs at the Continental Breakfast getting, eating, all, getting all the food. Right? And Dick Dale was behind. He said, hey man, don't take all the food. Leave some for the rest of us. And so one of, one of uh, I think it was the guitar tech, he's a big smart ass. And he turns around and he says, we can take all the food if we want. What are you going to do about it? And, he, and then Dick Dale gives a big smile. He was like, because <laughs> he had his big guys, come, his, his security guards were coming down from, on the elevator. He's like, mm-hmm. And then the other tech said, hey, man, move aside with our drum tech. And I forget, uh, it was Jason Lopez. Or, and he's a funny guy. He grabs our guitar tech. He says, move over. That's Dick Dale. That is Dick <laughs> Dale. And he starts, he, he starts, it was a big laugh fest after that. And then his bodyguards came. They're big football players and they would have wiped us out <laughs> so wow. it was it, and uh, we gave him an album and we shook his hand and he gave us an autograph and you know, Dick Dale is big time you know he's a big time guitar player and, and he's uh, a legend icon you know and you know it was it was fun it was it was our first tour it was, we were in a car it was two cars that's how we toured two cars and um, we were touring across the country and we got to meet Dick Dale on our very first U.S. tour. Wow. <laughs> Mola Chuck. If we look to the future, how would you uh, imagine the world looks in 200 years and which role um, is the music playing? Um, 200 years. Wow. <laughs> um, it's just going to continue to evolve. You know, uh, it's, I never thought that we would go from tape to hard drive, or be able to record an album with your iPhone. I can I can record an album with my iPhone. I can. So, you know, I and I could just imagine what the studio technology would be like, and I think it's just going to be something where you can make a, an album anywhere you walk, anywhere you go. As long as you have your instruments and you have your microphones, um, uh, you can still do it. You can, but you can. But where it's gonna be amazing. I think the sounds are gonna. Something's gonna. Something's gonna evolve. I think. I think. And sonically, there's gonna be a, another evolution. I know it. I, it has to be because of how technology leaps so, and and how. And, you know, if you would ever, like I said, you ever said uh, tape, no more tape, and you could uh, store everything in a little hard drive about this big, I would have, I would have. Mola Chuck. Hey, what's up? This is Rogelio Lozano from Downset, and you are watching Mola Chuck, the only TV you need. Make sure you watch it. Mola Chuck!